Insecurity has become a hot topic in Nigeria, from Boko Haram to killer herdsmen, unknown gunmen, banditry, and now full-blown terrorism. Now, as we take a look back at 2021, we will be analyzing and discussing the challenges and breakthroughs in the fight against insecurity. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The issue of insecurity is still on the front burner, just as it was in 2021. Various issues ranging from school kidnappings to killings, attacks on the NDA, extremist insurgencies, the killings of 44 journalists in the past year, and so on. Now, how has the government dealt with the issues so far? Well, joining us to discuss this are legal practitioners Ladipo Johnson and Tunji Abdulhamid. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Thank Happy you very much. Yeah, oh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Happy New Year to you too, Tunji. Um, so, uh, it, it might not be the best of ways to start the new year, but of course, um, uh, insecurity is an issue that continuously, um, you know, bedevils the country, whether it be north, south, east, or west. Uh, I'd like to start with you, T Tunji. Um, the question on everybody's mind is, now that we're in 2022, can we finally heave that sigh of relief in terms of insecurity um, and hope that governments will not just pay lip service to this issue, but of course make sure that it becomes something of some, some, some sort of a back burner issue and not what it is today? Uh, unfortunately, that answer is beyond me now because we are just starting the 2022. And uh, bearing in mind also that uh, I have not seen the, the government policy that is different from what happened in 2021. We are still not having a planning ahead. Hmm. We have not. We are not doing the right thing. We are doing the same thing the same way, and we are expecting different results. And it's not possible. We we have not done enough recruitment. We have not done enough uh, investment in the uh, uh, fighting uh, equipment. We have not done enough in terms of uh, ensuring that look things that will be required to uh, to to fight this insurgency are being provided. The welfare of, the, of our soldiers are not being are not being taken care of as adequately as it is today. So it it will be it will be difficult for me to sit here now and say in 2022 will be a different uh, uh, scenario uh, until I see those things on the ground or I see that those plans being put in place. That's when I can say, look, it may be different from 2022. Uh, Talk, 2021. Talking about plans, um, I just like to quickly take us back to 2021. January of 2021, we saw the defense headquarters telling us that, you know, um, I'd like to quote them directly on December. Uh, okay, I'll start with January of 2021. The military high command said that the nation's armed forces was now winning the war against insurgency and other forms of criminality across the country uh, based on appreciable um, results recorded in the various theaters of operation in 2021. Now, um, again, the act, uh, acting director of defense media and operations, Brigadier General Bernard Onyeko, still in 2021, at some point, made a declaration while uh, briefing defense correspondents on the operational activities of the armed forces of Nigeria, uh, saying that the armed forces was winning the war against terrorists and bandits. Uh, again, he also said during the year that the troops had neutralized scores of terrorists and bandits while they were on their different operations. Let's not forget that, as at yesterday, Two terrorists have been killed by a bombardment, an air bombardment carried out by the Air Force. This is something that is applaudable, but um, many people like you are saying you still haven't seen a lot that is being done. But that is something, isn't it? No, it is. It is that's, that's just a statement, a mere statement. I've not seen much. You know, we have been having these statements uh, from uh, uh, early, not even 2021, even for, for over four or five years ago. We have been, we are winning the war. The Boko Haram have been disseminated. The insurgents have been this and that. So many adjectives have been used to qualify them and to say whether or not they are winning. I don't know the yardstick they, 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 are, they are using to determine their winning formula in this regard. But we, uh, me, as a citizen, let, let me say we. I, 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 I am not seeing it. I'm not seeing the, 
the winning formula in this regard. I've not seen how they, they are winning the war because uh, day, day in, day out, we are hearing about insurgency, we are hearing about banditry, we are hearing about people being kidnapped. It's not safe for anybody to just travel anyhow now. You see, recently, I uh, told the, the trains have been attacked on uh, Abuja Abu Road and some other area like that. Mm -hmm. So if you are saying, talking about winning the war, I don't know what they are talking about in that in terms of uh, winning. I don't know the yastic, I don't know the criteria that they're being used to determine whether or not they are winning. But to me, I not, I've not seen the winning, uh, I, I've not seen how the war is being won by, 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 by the government. It, 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 we are not doing enough in terms of uh, uh, curtailing their activities. We are only reactionary. We, they, they, we wait them to, for them to attack us before we take actions, So, and which is not good for, our, for us. Mm. We, we, the, the, book, the, the, the criminals may have changed their tactics, Probably they are not uh, uh, gathered in the particular place just like before, whereby they will know that Sambisa or some other places are there and they, 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 they will come to the town, attack and, and, and withdraw back. That may, not be, that may not be the issue today. They, they have changed tactics and they, they, and they, they, they are doing other harmful art in this uh, uh, country. They, that's when we, we have banditry, we have kidnapping, we have so many other uh, arms of uh, uh, criminal now to these days. So how the government is winning the war? I would, I would require more explanation for me to be able to to, uh, to, to determine whether or not this right. But as far as I'm concerned, with what, what is on the ground, I want to put what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing them winning the war as it is now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson, let's start by looking at the kidnappings. We saw school children being kidnapped again and again and again. Same process. And nothing was done. They would take them to you know, different places, and we had to negotiate for these children to be released. We saw the attack on the NDA. We even saw... Boko Haram hoist its flag close to the FCT. I mean, 2021 held a lot for insecurity. And looking back at 2021, what are the things that you think that government could have done better uh, other than just paying lip service to this fight? Well, um, <clears throat> the insurgency, kidnappings, banditry are not things you face by conventional means. I think that, um, I'm not a security expert, forgive me, but from where one is sitting, you look at it, we've been looking at it for over God knows how many years now. More than and, and you wonder why certain things haven't changed. The borders are porous, they're still porous, no, no improvement. Um, the other day, just after Christmas or before Christmas, after Christmas, I went to Badagri Beach. And <laughs> with, within such a short time, we had about, I don't want to exaggerate, about 20 or so checkpoints or more. Hmm. In fact, way more. Police, police, customs, immigration, NDLE, this, that, that. And they weren't checks. They were tax collectors. It's as simple as that. So, so now, nobody checked your card. No, nobody no, checked no, your no, papers. No, no. Only one checkpoint did they say open the boots. Only one. They didn't check papers. They didn't check anything. And I saw as the commercial vehicles were going before us, they were just paying toll gates fees and everything. Now, if you're going to face this thing, you need to improve on your intelligence gathering. Mm. I believe that, um, I might be wrong, the government spread the defense forces thin because of the concentration in the eastern part of the country. IPOB, not IPOB, and this and that. That is a different thing from the um, banditry and what happened. In the northwest. So they spread themselves thin. I do not know, to be honest, we do not know, we're discussing it, what has been done to improve on intelligence gathering. What I see is that Minister for Information and his ministry, I don't even think we have a national orientation agency anymore. Yes, we do. Okay, I haven't seen anything. Well, they, they, they come alive just before the election. Okay, that's right. <laughs> I haven't seen them getting us, Nigerians, behind the armed forces. Hmm. It's an important thing. I've seen one or two videos 
from the army itself, you know, you understand, saying that we're working for you, we're doing this and that. It's fantastic. If the people in the northwest, northeast or so, are not confident enough to go to the military barracks, to say someone has come into our area, we <laughs> suspect him, and things like that, you will not. As um, my um, colleague there, my learned colleague said, we're playing catch up. Yeah. It's so clear that we're playing catch up. We haven't taken it to them. I'm not talking about um, the Kaduna state governor spoke about carpet bombing. Mm -hmm. How about the collateral damage? Mm -hmm. Have they considered that? Are the forests no-go areas to people who do things in the forest legally? How do you know they're not there when you want to carpet bomb the place? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you understand? So hmm. one begins to wonder. But unfortunately, you and I are not in the position to really deal with this matter because we don't have intelligence reports before us, mm -hmm. and we don't know enough about well, what is well, going still, on. Still talking but about what we know, Governor yeah. Elrufai has said that these bandits need not be negotiated with. They yeah. need not be forgiven because there are still people like Sheikh Ahmed Gumi who is still pushing that these people not necessarily be killed, uh, that they should be uh, given some form of amnesty. And he's saying, no, the amnesty that these people should receive is in, in death. Um, so... If he's saying, let's kill all of them, how do we know these people? Because that's another problem that the army and military officials have. These people look like the people in the Northwest. So how can you tell one from the other? Exactly. If you had proper intelligence. And if you had a system in place whereby the moment you get them doing conflict... You understand? When you arrest someone who has an AK-47 and after a gun battle or so, how do you process them? What happens? We haven't seen um, them being taken to court or having a tribunal for it. Or Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. you, we, we, we don't know what is going on. So for those millions of Nigerian youth who do not have political reasons, but feel that, oh, this business is moving, that's kidnapping, mm -hmm. because we're unemployed, there is nothing that has acted as a deterrent to them. Mm. You understand? All these things take the carrot and stick approach. Mm. The government must be firm. When you are firm and you deal ruthlessly with some people, some will come to the table quickly. Do you not think the government is being firm so far? I mean, we've had cases where uh, the chief of army staff came out in the same 2021 to say that, that we should not be cowards. We should rise up and fight for ourselves. We yeah, cannot and wait. And give us guns we, I mean, and licenses to carry. But then that's, but they that, won't do that. But that's chaos. <laughs> that's against our constitution. Again, no, change the constitution. Again, um, the, we remember that um, the um, NIA boss had also declared some parts of the country at, at a time a no-fly zone. Yeah. This is the government being decis decisive. Is this not decisive enough? Or is it that these words or these uh, um, statements by the government yeah. is not matched with the same power? Talk is cheap. You make statements... As um, Leonard colleague said, ah, um, Boko Haram has been decimated. You make these statements, and so your people, we the people, no longer believe in what you're saying. Hmm. We the people, someone like Lai Mohammed, for instance, we the people don't really believe him anymore because he's made so many statements on different things. Why would they believe him, trust him as the messenger, and say, yes, our troops are doing this. Mm. You, it's all disjointed. When you make such statements, as you said, yes, it's good to be firm. You must be firm within the context of a set of actions. Mm. You don't just say something, and then the next thing, someone has the temerity to attack the NDA. Ooh. Well, let me come back to you, Tunji. Let's talk about the, um, the 
let's call it an amnesty program. You know that the army at some point decided that they were going to rehabilitate these um, gunmen who decided to um, give themselves up and say they were repentant. And this, is, this was not just Boko Haram members, this were some bandits also. And it, for the army, they were very impressed uh, and they decided that they were going to go into this rehabilitation process. But as we speak, um, I do not know where that pro program is going because most of, the, as the army itself again reported, that most of these people who were rehabilitated went back as spies to Boko Haram enclave. They were taking back information to Boko Haram. So there are people, again, who are still kicking against this rehabilitation program. One, they're asking how the soldiers who have fallen in battle as a result of fighting these men, how their family members and their colleagues would feel, what will happen to their morale. There are also those who are saying, what about the family members and, and the children of those who have been killed by, at the hands of these same people who are now trying to say that they're repentant? What about, you know, how this makes us look, plus the fact that these people still go back with intel to the same terrorists to come back and hit on our people? So we're looking at it on, on all sides. How does this program help? Let's not also forget that taxpayers' money is used in this rehabilitation process. They're giving clothes, they're giving food. Uh, the man who took one of our young girls as wife came back into the country with her and a child. What happens to that man? Will he be taken to court? Um, you know, will he be tried for, of course, child abuse? Because the girl in question was a child at the time she was taken. And, of course, terrorism. These are questions that are begging for answers. What are your thoughts? And you see, those things you've said, you've answered all the questions. You've said it and you've answered all the questions indirectly. Because um, it is even ridiculous for you to even think of that uh, policy at all. It is ridiculous because it's insensitive to the, to the people who are the victims of those, uh, of those people. You can, how, can you, how can you even consider giving anybody a uh, pardon or whatever form of uh, amnesty when he has killed people, when he has uh, maimed people, he has rendered people homeless, he has sort of the country into another thing. In fact, we, they've rendered our economy valueless and all those things. And you are still considering for, for amnesty. When those who are victims are, are somewhere you call IDP, they cannot even eat, they cannot even sleep well, they cannot even enjoy anything. And you are, you are, you are, you are celebrating people who kill them. Who rendered them homeless? Who rendered them? Who has rendered them? Made them become widow and widower, and you are widowers, and you and you, and you are. You know, it's, it's ridiculous to even think of that program at all. To to think that you just rehabilitate somebody and then give him. You see, we are having this problem in this country of insecurity because the government seem to have uh, 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 make a crime a, a, a good uh, venture or a good business in uh, to, to so to say because uh, a situation whereby I commit crime. You beg me or pardon or in the name of your you are, you are doing amnesty or whatever. You offer me a uh, good things of life, money or some other facility or even job that people are looking for free of charge. And then you say other people will not think of uh, going to the same crime. You see, we, the government is not even handling the matter very well. As far as I'm concerned, because there's no way they, 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 we are not being, people are not being punished. I'm not aware that any, most people who have been uh, 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 what's it called, arrested or, or taken mm -hmm. for committing this uh, crime we are talking about. Uh, 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 any 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 court facing any any, any trial or any criminal uh, uh, serious criminal uh, action is the situation whereby the government itself will give excuses for why people are, are committing crime. We, we I, I I I remember a governor in particular part of the north. I think it's San Francisco. I'm not too sure of the of the state giving excuses for why people are are committing the crime they are committing. That is those are called banditry. And another 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 funny thing is that we try to always uh, in an attempt in an attempt to to, 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 to help those who are committing crime. We've trivialized the crime by looking for a, an adjective to qualify what they're doing. I don't, know, I don't know the difference between banditry or uh, insurgency or those who are committing uh, killing people and uh, kidnappers. I don't know the difference between them. They are, as far as I'm concerned, they are all criminals. And they, are, they, are all, they, are, they, are, they deserve to, to face the consequences of, of their heart by, by being tried at the court of, at the court of law. And uh, we, 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 we have mercy and pity for them. I don't know why. And if you have mercy or pity for people or sympathy for people who are committing crime, there's no way that that crime will be, they will stop the, 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 the crime. So you, you we're not doing the government is not doing the right, it's not doing the right thing in, in covering the crime. So these are issues that have to be looking to. People are the, our armies are there fighting, living, losing their lives, and people are outside who have been making them to, to sleep outside their houses 
are being compensated. How do you think they will feel? They will feel bad. And that, that, will, that will not help anybody. So as far as I'm concerned, the government attitude towards, towards fight of this, uh, toward this, the fight is not encouraging at all and it cannot even give them better results because okay. uh, they are not doing the right thing uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. We have, uh, we have um, uh, enough, uh, we have also got this, but you cannot get or whatever they have bought. We are yes. told it cannot be used uh, for, for those who have not been declared uh, uh, terrorists. Why did you not got, uh, why, why did you not acquire the, 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 the what's it called? The facility. Well, that, that. I, I'd, we like, to, I'd like to quote the AGF. The AGF was quoted um, yesterday on, on TV for, to say that um, the reason why certain things have not been put in play is because they're trying to make sure that they do it in, um, um, you know, in line with international best practices. He even talked about the issue of, um, you know, naming these bandits as terrorists because people were asking why it was taking too long for the government to you know start dealing with these bandits as terrorists and he's saying that that the, the reason why they're stalling is because they're trying to work in line with international best practices but uh, you, you wanted to say something no, I, was just going to I, I beg to disagree with the AGF in that regard because he has only been talking and no action he, he told us he will release the name of uh, those who are sponsoring uh, uh, this uh, crime or this one I've not seen any he told us, uh, how many, how many, how many years, how many months does it take him to prescribe uh, IPOP? Why is it taking them so long to prescribe other people who are committing crime? So as far as I'm concerned, it's just, a, it's just a rhetoric, whatever he's saying, as far as, far as I'm concerned. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, regarding um, the amnesty thing. Even if you're going to grant amnesty, first you take them out of circulation. Mm. You understand? Let them begin to serve their time. Get as much information from them as possible. Process them. I'm not saying torture them. Mm. Process them. You've taken them out of the theater of war. You've reduced that side. And then you can then begin after you have dealt the blow. You understand? Mm -hmm. To say, okay, for this and that, because you have cooperated, because you've given us information, we don't just give you amnesty for putting down weapons. You must bring something to the table. Hmm. You've committed crimes. You don't just give amnesty like that. And then you now let millions of Nigerians who cannot afford to go to school, you now let them hear that you want to send some of them overseas for studies. It's interesting. Let me just bring something in. Recently, the Sultan of Sokoto, Alajis Adabubakar, talked about the fact that lack of love is responsible for insecurity in Nigeria. <laughs> and the very famous um, human rights activist, uh, Dile Farotimi, said something, and I'd like to just uh, you know, put that. He says that it would not be true that lack of love is the problem. He says, the absence of equity, he says, justice and the rule of law are responsible for everything that is wrong in the country. And I want to ask you a question before we wrap things up. At the, at the heart of this insecurity, there obviously is something, there is a wrong that is, that's allowed for this to brew. Because we've also seen in 2021, um, the fact that there have been more and more non-state actors, you know, coming up. I mean, the biggest of them is Sunday Boa and Kanu, but there might be more of these people because of the loophole that these things uh, have created. So, yeah. I think that um, there are two, two, ways, two, two sides to it. Yes, lack of equity, fairness, justice, equal opportunity, economic opportunities, educational opportunities will cause that, has led to part of it, mm -hmm. especially the banditry aspect. Mm -hmm. um, unemployment, things like that, that's one. The other one, is that you have people from outside have been coming in. There's no lack of opportunity there. It's the opportunity they've seen. The lack of security, the insecurity, and whatever. That's the opportunity they're taking. They're coming in to cause mayhem for whatever reason. Either religious, I'm talking Boko Haram, either religious, either, I don't know, ideology or what have you. So we're fighting not just one, we're fighting several battles. Mm. And unfortunately, it seems that our government and I dare say the um, hierarchy of the armed forces 
they seem to be at their wit's end. They seem to be <laughs> in the deep end, yeah. you know, not knowing what to do. They're just throwing the army at them. They, you need a different form of... Um, I'm not a security expert, but it's obvious that this is a different form of um, thing. Warfare. And the economy will not improve if there's insecurity. Mm. It's a vicious cycle. And if it doesn't improve, you have more young people unemployed, inflation going up, more people want to rob. And government can't do anything. You have a police force that is not totally engaged. So the governors continue to negotiate. And every time you give them money, they have more money to buy weapons. And the borders are still porous. You are not doing anything with the immigration, with the customs, with the borders. So those who are coming in will keep coming in. So we have a lot of problems. Well, this is a sad one, but uh, on that very gloomy note, I'm going to say thank you to Ladipo Johnson, Tumja Dulami, the both legal practitioners. On our next segment, we're going to be talking about, of course, the fact that we are in campaign season and the elections are around the corner. What needs to be done? But gentlemen, thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we discuss security challenges facing the campaign and election season. Our guest is standing by. Stay with us.